live from the MGM Grand Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's The Q at Splunk.com 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Splunk. Here are your hosts, Jeff Kelly and Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. We're at Splunk.conf 2014, the fifth annual Splunk user conference here at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm Jeff Frick. I'm here with my co-host, Jeff Kelly. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, and we're joined uh, by John Rakowski, who's with Forrester, an analyst covering uh, infrastructure and operations professionals. That's correct. Uh, John, thanks for joining us on theCUBE. No problem, it's great to kind of be finally on theCUBE. I've seen the channel online and stuff, and it's finally great to be here. Excellent, well, welcome. That's great to hear, we're, we're glad to have you. So uh, we were just ta chatting a little bit um, before we went on air, that you've been, you've been covering, or you introduced to Splunk in any event, uh, many years ago, 2007. If yeah. you could re retell that story a little bit, how you first came, about, uh, came upon Splunk. It seems like such a long time ago now. When people say 2007, it's like, wow, that was, you know, it does seem quite a long time ago. So actually, uh, this, I was first introduced to Splunk. It was actually at a Microsoft Management Summit. And they introduced their technology to me as being a bit like a, a, a Google search engine for Windows servers. You know, you could uh, aggregate log files, do searches for important bits of information. And I thought, well, that's definitely interesting. And you know, I can see some of the kind of use cases for this but is it really disruptive? And I looked at it, and look at where we are today. Look at the size of this conference. I mean, today, you know, Splunk are in the MGM Grand. Mm -hmm. This is where IBM hold, IBM Pulse. So the, the, the growth of this company has been absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, so, so let's walk through that a little bit. How did they achieve this kind of growth? I mean, they, you know, you cover, among other things, application performance management and um, infrastructure monitoring, those kind of, Areas yep. and certainly that's where Splunk plays, but they do more than that as well. And they've, they've kind of, you know, we've talked a little bit on the cube earlier about they've confounded Wall Street a little bit because Wall Street doesn't quite understand exactly what they are. Are yep. they a tools company, a platform company? How do you account for this growth? Um, really, you know, what they're doing very well is that they're able to um, record, analyze data. And I think in today's kind of modern world, you know, in the, in the kind of digital economy then you know, data is really the new gold. If you can mine that data, turn that into information very, very rapidly, present it in the right context to an audience, that's when you really generate business insight. So Splunk's development, its platform, has enabled for this rapid um, recording of data, kind of rapid interrogation of data. It's just had the right platform. Plus, you know, as the solution is developed, it's provided great features in order to interrogate that data. And I think with uh, Splunk Enterprise 6 and moving onwards, it's made it very easy even for non-technical people uh, or technical professionals to interrogate that data. So the use of kind of Pivot um, you know, has been a, a great kind of addition to the products. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it, I mean, we have to remember, we live in a world in which technology fuels our, our lives, it fuels our businesses. And where there's technology, there's data. The more you can understand that data, mine that data, turn it into insight, then the more potential c competitive advantage you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Well, contrast that to, or, or put Splunk into context in terms of the APM market. Yep. Um, so what, the things you just described, were the traditional, are the, the traditional APM vendors not able to do that in a way? Were they more focused on reporting versus analytics? I mean, how, how has Splunk been able to disrupt that uh, market. Yeah, well, Jeff, you're kind of hitting the nail on the head, as we'd say in the UK. Basically, um, you know, a lot of the kind of monitoring uh, or management approaches when it comes to application performance management, when it comes to infrastructure workload management, I would classify a lot of those uh, approaches as being kind of a, a rear view mirror look. So monitoring the performance, the availability of applications, of infrastructure workloads, reporting, alerting, you know, those are very kind of IT-centric terms. It's not very kind of forward-looking. Now, granted, the APM market, or application performance management market, is shifting very, very quickly. If you look at the number of kind of the key players there, they are moving into this area of analytics. I think everyone understands the value of data and turning data into information. But historically, Monitoring management has been about rear view analysis and not forward looking analysis, but that's starting to change. So, where Splunk has been, you know, kind of 
sitting on top of a pedestal for a number of years in regards to analyzing machine data. I see that changing very, very quickly. There's going to be a number of more plays in here. We're going to see APM plays coming in. We're going to see those more established plays, the likes of you know, IBM and uh, maybe even CA come in here and try and disrupt that market. Everyone wants a piece of understanding data. And talk about why that's so important, specifically in the application development world, of having forward-looking, well, both real-time and also, some, to some extent, predictive-looking, uh, predictive uh, analytics when you're talking about supporting applications in the, in the so-called DevOps yep. um, mindset. So the reality is, I mean, the world in terms of delivering applications, in terms of delivering business services, we're having to move faster and faster. Customers, employees are demanding this. You know, um, internally, business services applications are there to kind of make the workforce more productive. In terms of externally, mobile apps, uh, web-based applications are making, sh are making sure that you can engage when you're, with your customers as and when they want to engage and delight them at the same time. Um, and the reality is, you know, when it comes to um, predictive analytics, it's really about understanding that customer's behavior. And I think this is where Splunk's kind of evolution is starting to take them. It's not so much about understanding the performance of an application or infrastructure. At the end of the day, you can have a, a highly performing application, an always available kind of infrastructure workload. It's about understanding that customer, that user, kind of what they want, what delights them. Because if you can understand that, you can serve them in a better way. And that's what kind of understanding data and big data analytics or business intelligence, as a whole host of words you can apply to that, <laughs> this is what it's really about. Mm -hmm. It's been about understanding your customer, understanding your customer personas, their journeys, how they engage with your organization in order to be better serve them, in order to delight them, in order to stay one step ahead of your competition. Because if you don't do that, if you don't delight them via your applications and business services, then there's one thing which can be guaranteed. They will switch to another provider. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So clearly, yeah, I mean, I like the way you frame that. They are moving from this, you know, this idea of keeping your application performing at top, you know, top speeds and, and reacting, uh, reaction time versus what are exactly, what value is it delivering to customers and how can we improve on that? Um, the value which is delivering to customers today is that as the engagement channels start to change to being kind of digital engagement channels. So customers are engaging with organizations uh, through digital means, whether that's mobile apps today, maybe tomorrow that's going to be wearable technology. That's just around the corner. All of these um, consumer devices rely on software, rely on the performance and availability of applications. Mm -hmm. So for the, the reality is for kind of IT operations professionals here, here today, and that's kind of Splunk's kind of bread and butter, that's kind of where they come from, they're really helping safeguard and optimize the commercial success of their organizations. So the reality is, you know, why this is important is that because it's not just about performance and availability anymore, technical performance and avail availability, it's about commercial performance and availability. Mm -hmm. So that's where the use case is starting to shift. And now, are you seeing the underlying, so the application developers, do they have to develop a new skill essentially, to understand the shift? You know, they're, if they're used yeah. to looking at, oh, I want to keep my application running, and if I do that, I've checked the box, versus adapting to what the customer actually wants or how you can serve the customer better. I think, ultimately, the world of IT, so the world of the IT professional, whether you're talking about the IT operations professional, whether you're talking about the, the developer, the architect, I think we're going through an evolution. Um, you know, brought about by changes such as uh, kind of DevOps, uh, changes such as cloud. But the reality is organizations are having to move faster. And any IT professional really has to take an outside-in approach to the services which they're developing and the kind of services which they're supporting. First and foremost, they need to understand, what does my industry do? Why do my customers buy from my organization? Why do they engage with my organization? Because they have to understand that the services which they're developing, the applications which they're developing, really are linked to the commercial success, and more importantly, the brand of their business. 
What strikes me is this kind of DevOps move into the way things are delivered, not so much from a software development methodology, but really from a perspective. It's not the day where you go into the room with the whiteboard and do an MRD, which is a big, thick thing, and then you do the PRD, and that's a big thing. That's yeah. really not the way anymore, right? It's deliver it, listen, make change. Deliver, listen, make change. And, and making the changes based on real customers and what they, what they want. It's a very different, kind of methodology of going to market and trying to deliver that customer value as opposed to trying to design the perfect solution or what you think people want or a better speed and feed yeah. than my competitor. Really that outward focus. Yeah, the reality is what we really see the shift here is that you know, DevOps or and sometimes you know, DevOps is really a marketing term. I hear that DevOps far too often. It's really about modern service delivery. It's about the evolution of IT. We're delivering faster but we still need to maintain uh, quality. So those feedback loops between have become very, very important. The feedback loops between operations and development. But more importantly, what you need to do is understand that there's a full value chain here, which you need to kind of understand. All the way from the external customer, all the way through to the back end kind of server teams and kind of database teams. The reality really is that in order to move faster, you need to have information and data at, at, your kind of, uh, at your fingertips. And this is where a good analytics solution enables you to do that, because it enables, enables you to record that data and turn that data into information very, very rapidly. And this information and insight can be used then to optimize these feedback loops and provide information to the right audience. And not only rapidly, but democratically. I think that's the other big thing. I think that's where it you know, feels like traditional BI fell down and that you had to have really smart people coming up with really smart hypotheses that could manage a whole bunch of data, where now it's really switched in this post-Google oh, yeah. world, where the data's all there, now your job is to, to kind of query it and take a little feedback, query it again, take a little feedback, and to pump that all the way down into lots of people doing their, their yeah. jobs, as opposed to the hallowed ones uh, with all the PhDs in the back office behind Mahogany Row. Exactly, we live in the world at the moment um, which is focused on what's called the, you know, the data scientist. They're the new saviors of the organization. To me, you know, if you're in the role of being a data scientist, that's a limited role. It's a tactical response to not having the solutions which we require today in order to kind of mine and understand that data and turn it into information and insight. But you know, a good analytics solution is looking to understand the questions which have been asked of the information in order to remove that need of the expensive data scientist, and I honestly believe that Splunk are kind of moving in that direction. Um, with you know, the easy kind of pivot tables, being able to easily interrogate that data, making it so that you don't have to be a, a data expert in order to query the data, well, that's where then um, you know, we start to remove that kind of need for the specialist data scientist skills. Yeah, and, and the other piece that strikes me is their focus on bringing in lots of different data. I don't care if it's structured or it's unstructured. I don't care if it's coming off a mobile phone or if it's coming off a, a Twitter stream. I don't care if it's between two, two machines in the data center or a connection to the mainframe, right? There's, there's value in that and pulling it together, aggregating it together. Certainly they're, they're benefiting from you know, reduced prices in hardware and lots of faster computers. But to bring all that together and then let people query it uh, in almost a more human way. I just think of when you go into an agile software development shop, right? They've got the, the big boards all yep. over the place and the burn downs and you know, this, this power of a feedback loop in a software development environment and now we just had Aaron on talking about his, his customer agents also having big boards all over the places looking for changes in application performance or changes in people hitting a particular place and then responding at that, with that real time feedback loop. Yeah, exactly, I mean, um, and you know, you emphasize the point about structured and unstructured data. And again, I don't care about that definition. This whole notion of structured, unstructured data in 2014, it really is not kind of, um, it doesn't hold weight anymore. You know, for me, any analytics company is doing business intelligence because data is so, and technology-based data is so intrinsic to commercial success, to the applications which are being run then it doesn't matter whether you're looking at structured and unstructured uh, data. And it's actually, I've just finished writing a report which talks about kind of monitoring, how we need to, need to elevate the role of monitoring to be really being about situational awareness. And when I talk about monitoring, I also refer to analytics as well. 
And the reality is this notion of situational awareness comes from the US Marines. So when a US Marine is on the battlefield, they need to have uh, the right information at the right moment in order to make the right, the right next decision because it's critical. And you know, in the world of IT, in the world of business, well, our battlefields may be different, but it's still the same concept. It's about making sure you're getting the right data and information at the right time in order to make the right decision. Now, more and more, as we kind of see uh, the analytics market moving forward, it's not about the human making decisions. It's about automation then kicking in to make automated kind of actions. That's the kind of next iteration as well. Now, do you see Splunk playing a role in that? Can they, can they move to, so right now, most of the Splunk solutions are, you know, people are looking at dashboards and then they're making decisions. Can Splunk move into that automation role? And I, I agree with you. I think yep. when you can automate real-time intelligent decision making, that's when, you know, you can make a significant impact yep. uh, in your organization. Because if you're dealing with, uh, you know, applications or, you know, a consumer doing something on a mobile app, you, you, you don't have time for somebody to sit back and say, hmm, here's the offer we should, we should make to that person. It's got to be automated in, a, in an intelligent way. Uh, can Splunk play a role in that? I think they will play a role uh, because they're setting themselves up as being this operational intelligence uh, platform. You know, any good uh, enterprise solution today has got open APIs, which means that you can easily integrate the solution with other solutions. The automation market is still very much uh, emerging in that mm -hmm. sense. But, you know, before we can automate something, there's a fundamental aspect which needs to be addressed. Any automation means that we must trust the data which is being recorded. And that is not a, a, a kind of step in which, you know, Splunk can help people trust the data, but that's really an evolution um, of we as human beings. We need to be able to trust machines. Uh, I know from my history, we've been brought up in the 80s, I mean, I was brought up on Terminator. I don't want that to happen. <laughs> but, you know, fundamentally, this is the way which we're going. For, mm -hmm. for organizations to move faster, for them to serve services to you as, as a consumer and applications to you, to delight you, to deliver services in context, then automation plays a big field in this. But the analytics engine behind this, the algorithms which take, turn data for information, it's just key for automation to be successful. Uh, how are we going to get to that point where we can trust the machine? Is that a, you, you, know, you referenced you know, what you grew up, is it a generational thing? Is it going to take the next generation or is there something that can happen in the meantime to move us along and people like you and I and help us trust the machines? Some of this is definitely you know, a, a generation thing. Uh, as we see you know, the so-called millennials coming into the workplace, I think there's more of an acceptance there about uh, you know, being comfortable with the use of technology, with the use of automation. I mean, my two-year-old already kind of understands how to use, you know, a modern smartphone. So she's mm -hmm. already kind of saying the name of the smartphone. I'm not going to give that smartphone any more credit or that company any more credit. But <laughs> she knows how to use it, how to she's access little, videos. She's little, we know which one it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, so some of this is a generation thing. But, you know, some of this is that if you really want to stay and remain competitive, then you know, every organization today who wants to remain competitive is trying to understand their data, trying to turn data into information and use analytic solutions. But what's the next stage then? Well, you need to automate. You need to do it faster than your competition. So automation just becomes part of being competitive. So we will see that shift uh, coming along. But we have to become more comfortable and trust the data which is being kind of recorded and uh, which has been analyzed. Yeah, and I think you know one of the other things that's going to move it along is when those early adopters are seeing success, and their competitors are seeing are, are seeing themselves being passed by. Yeah. You know, fear can be a great motivator um, for the adoption of technology and new approaches. This is more of a, an approach, not, not necessarily any given technology. I mean, there's any number of technologies that might help us get to that point where you can automate yeah. uh, some of these real-time decision makings. But it's more about the approach and, as you say, understanding and, and trusting that the decisions are going to be accurate and are going to provide the value that you expect. Exactly, I mean, you, you mentioned this is not a kind of solution, but it's an approach. And what we do in IT today, we're very good at productizing different kind of trends. We talk about cloud, we talk about big data, business intelligence, we talk about DevOps. And we productize and segment each of these areas. And in reality, all these areas are interlinked together. Mm -hmm. This is about an evolution and the way we deliver technologies, but an evolution in our relationship with technology. 
well, how do you think this is going to impact the so-called mega vendors out there? And this, is kind of, this is kind of getting back to the products, but can they, you know, the, the vendors that brought us the more traditional data management, data warehouse, BI world, the rear view mirror look, the very yep. structured approach where you've got to know the question ahead of time, wait three months to get the data warehouse modeled, three months is probably being generous. Can they pivot and, and what stops an IBM or an Oracle from coming in and, and doing what Splunk does? Can, can they make that transition? Uh, what are the barriers for them? There's many barriers. <laughs> um, some of this, you have to remember these kind of big organizations, um, you know, they're public companies and they have to kind of address the stock market, they have to address their shareholders, they have to make profit. And so when you're in a cycle of selling solutions, which is still selling because you know, IT is still fragmented, so they're selling one monitoring solution to the database team, another one to the server team, they're selling you know, different solutions everywhere, then that makes it easy to generate kind of profit. And you get locked into a very kind of short-term cycle. So all you're doing is trying to satisfy you know, the stock market, Wall Street in that sense. And so in the last year, we've seen actually organizations transition to being private again. So they can start to become innovative, that they don't have to answer to the stock market. And so this could be a challenge for Splunk, actually. You know, Splunk is a public co organization now. So it'd be interesting to see how quickly or how innovative they still are in the next couple of years, because they have to maintain and generate profit. Yeah, well, and, and you know, we're seeing they're, they're still losing money. Uh, they're oh, yeah. close to break even, but I guess last quarter. But generally, they're still losing money because they're investing it all in the, back in the company and, and you know, trying to lay the foundation for even, even further growth. But that's a critical question I think you identified is how, when do they take their foot off the pedal a little bit? When do they start trying to turn a profit? And how does that impact their ability to innovate and stay ahead of all the kind of next generation competitors that are nipping at their heels? Yeah. I suppose that for that question, you can say, well, when is Amazon going to make a profit? Well, there's, yeah, I guess <laughs> yeah, there's they, the answer right there. They're going to get a lot of pressure, but it's not stopping them from just <laughs> plowing all the revenue back into the company. So we'll see. Exactly. At the end of the day, for Splunk, if they really want to be disruptive and they're moving into the business intelligence kind of market and disrupt that market, which I think they're on track to do, then they've got to maintain that innovation. They've got to maintain, they've got to spread their brand beyond IT and into the business. You know, I want to be in a conference in the next couple of years, a Splunk conference, and rather than the CIO of GE Capital coming on the stage, I want the CMO to come on stage and show how they've used Splunk to generate insight, to generate competitive advantage. And I think that will be the time when you know that Splunk has been really, really successful. Well, John, thanks for coming on. Uh, John Rakowski from Forrester, great insight. Always love getting analysts on, great point of views, and some really good insights as the, the focus and the locus of competitive forces is changing as everyone's becoming a software company. Exactly. It's terrific. So again, we are, uh, you're watching theCUBE, Jeff Kelly here with me, Jeff Frick, our, our third year here at Splunk.conf. We'll see what's happening in a couple of years, how many CMOs we have on the keynote. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.